Oh, yesterday I, I spoke about uh, computer science and computer programming uh, is related to writing and mathematics, which are things that are very abstract on one hand. On the other, computer science is also very rigorous, very concrete, like engineering. And that is what uh, that is the thing that uh, really bewilders me. How can something be very abstract at the same time very concrete? So so uh, to to really understand this, I think uh, we have to bridge the gap between the end abstraction, which is the high level programming languages, the highest of all, of course. Uh, 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 example are uh, a lot of scripting languages, interpreted languages such as Python, Ruby, uh, and then uh, that that is the high level programming languages. We have to link it to the bare metal, uh, deep down inside computers. Uh, how does a computer actually do something very concrete? How does it do work? How does it do work? When I say do work, of course, the more abstract one is like when when you press uh, the scissor button in your sound editing software, it is able to cut the music into half. How does it do that? But actually, not only that, not only inside a computer screen, we could we could actually use computers to do really concrete things. For example, robotics. Why uh, would a computer, uh, deep down inside robots, uh, there, uh, there are computer chips, the microchips, uh, why are those chips able to instruct a robot to move their hands? If you don't already know, please go to YouTube and watch uh, Boston Dynamics, a really marvelous uh, robotics company. So far, they have developed uh, Atlas, Sport, all the really uh, well-functioning robots who can walk and dance. So we have to bridge the gap, uh, engineering, and, and on one hand, you, you have computers doing real stuff, like a real engine. And then on the other hand, you have high programming languages, they're very abstracting, because when you write Python and Ruby, it almost feels like you are writing novel, essays, literature, you are doing mathematics, very abstract, because most people regard mathematics as something quite useless. Uh, for me at least, you solve a lot of algebra problem, but at the same time, those algebra problem is uh, uh, are still not helping you to get more food, to become richer, very abstract. So to see the linkage, linkage between these two extreme opposite ends, right, we have to first think, uh, I, th I think we would, we would be better to start with the bare metal at the end of the CPU chip. How does it do work? Uh, of course, if you study uh, uh, um, the computer architecture, Inside, inside a CPU, uh, it is made up of uh, millions or even billions of uh, transistors. So what is a transistor? A transistor, the, the word transistor comes from the word trans-resistance, which is a concept in physics. Uh, in actual term, why, what is trans-resistance? I, I don't really understand, but, it, but uh, to simplify it uh, easily, transistor is a semi uh, is is a is a device is when I say device it doesn't look like that uh, it, the real transistor is so small a transistor is a device that is made up of semiconductor the nature of semiconductors such as silicon or germanium germanium is that when you supply enough electricity and raise the voltage then the it will be able to release electrons. But however, if your supply too low, the electricity supply is too low, uh, then it will block it. The electrons will not be able to flow. And these electrons flow or not flow, the decision making, uh, it, is, it is something physicists, physicists uh, figured out. We now are able to harness electrons as we like. We supply more electricity, electrons will flow. If we don't supply it, electrons won't flow. It is as if suddenly we become a, 
a god. Uh, we humans becomes a uh, we humans become a god. We are able to harness and control electrons, uh, in the most micro sense, and as a result, we just do repeat that process in a million and billion times. That's why people want to uh, amalgamate millions of transistors into one small CPU. When you have millions of transistors, you could control the electrons, millions of electrons flowing, and that's how you do things. You make decision: the electrons flow or not flow. And uh, when you are able to control the electrons, that's the moment how uh, how you could do things. So, for example, when you have uh, a video editing software or Photoshop photo editing software, the moment you press a button using your mouse, why are the pictures altered? Why are the pictures being modified? The reason is when you press a mouse, the mouse sends a signal. Electronic signal, which is basically electron, into the CPU. All right, and then CPU has to make a decision. Oh, by going to the storage in the hard disk, I now need to change the the codes behind the picture. So this is how computers actually do work. But, but again, the the gap between this end, the engineering end. Between the Python and Ruby codes that you write, it is still enormously big. The gap is so big. Why the moment, for example, in Python you write a while loop or you you call a graphics library, uh, you will be able to okay. For example, you call Pi Game or T Kinter in 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 uh Python, it's a graphics library. Then you write a few lines of codes. The computers will be able to draw things automatically on the screen. Why is it so? Uh. Because deep down it feels like magic. Again, we use an analogy when you have a piece of paper, you 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 write an instruction. Okay, draw a circle. Uh, not nothing will, be, will will get done. No one will draw the circle for you unless there is a subservient people. I don't know whether it's your slave, is your uh, mate, is your puppet. He will draw for you, but unless. Unless there is a slave for you, no one would do that for you. But computers is different. You could instruct it to draw it. So the moment you uh, call a T Kinter library, you you write draw a circle. Of course, you have to uh, you have to specify the coordinate you want to draw it at a ninety comma hundred and twenty five coordinate, which is a spot in the screen, and then you want to draw it in what color, okay? And then when you click run, which is Uh, you run the source code, computers will do it for you. So, so the the main thing I want to discover and really fully understand is how the moment you click run, that few lines of T Kinter's source code would be able to instruct the transistors at the end. Uh, to to fully understand that, I think uh, we have to. There, there, there's too many processes in the middle. So first of all, uh, the T Kinter's code that you've written get interpreted, all right, and converted into assembly language. Assembly language uh, get compiled and uh, become binary. Binary is zero and one, all right. And one must be mindful. These computers never understand what is zero and one. And this zero and one is a metaphor, because deep down. Transistors only know two things. It only knows oh, too much of electricity, too much of electrons are overwhelming me. Let's say I'm a transistor. Too much of electricity and electrons are overwhelming me, and therefore now I will let the electrons flow. The moment electrons and electron flows through, we call it one. But actually, computers don't understand what is one. We one and zero is just a notation, a metaphorical notation humans use to. Uh, understand transistors. So just how I said, your Python T Kinter's codes get uh, compiled. Get, first of all, get interpreted into assembly language, and assembly language gets uh, compiled into binary. And the moment becomes zero and one, the machine code. Okay, then the CPU will be able to understand. Okay, one, I will let the electrons to flow. Zero, I won't let it to flow. And when I say the machine codes, it is enormous. Yeah, it could be millions of lines of machine codes. And then machine codes are passed to the uh, CPU. The CPU need to, need to make a decision. Okay, let's say one. A lot of ones are being passed to me. Now I need to instruct the graphic graphics uh, processing unit, GPU, to 
slowly draw slowly draw uh, the circle that uh, my master which is the programmer uh, wanted in the first place the, uh, of course the CPU ha has to make a decision regarding uh, which spot you want to draw it and then you also need to make a decision on what color what is the thickness and then slowly the computers will draw one by one one dot one pixel by one pixel and one pixel one by one pixel the entire circle is drawn on the screen using T Kinter and uh, this is the part the entire marvel of uh, this invention of transistors computers so you could now easily write an abstract line of instructions and computers will do things for you it bridges the gap between uh, engineering and uh, writing and mathematics because traditionally 500 years ago when you have an idea you could write it down all right uh, pen and paper uh, had already been invented or you have mathematical logical ideas you could write it down but nothing gets done you need another human to pass the language to pass the writing that you have written pass the mathematical equations you have written and then think and think and think that only that readers go to the real world and and transpires transform the ideas you have written into real things by thinking about all oh, the ideas how could i use the real atoms around me to make things uh, however now computer programming uh, largely uh, bridges the gap uh, it is something uh, very marvelous uh, but but until now i still don't uh, really understand it because to fully understand how uh, high level languages instruct transistors in detail uh, one thing is uh, i have to really study compiler uh, which is a very complex topic because uh, to really understand how the if else while and for loops are converted into binary you have to know um, uh, how compilers work, the parser and lexer, but not only that, you also you also have to understand uh, deep down the computer architecture, the CPU, von Neumann architecture. You have to understand how could we con con convert a keyword if else or while loop into binary, one and zero, but at the same time you have to those one and zeros, the machine codes have to be compatible to the actual electronics, the transistor inside the microchip. I, I, I suspect inside the CPU, the microchip, every single transistor has an actual coordinate, actual code. So that's why when you want to draw something, a circle on the screen, your if else while loop, if you want to compile it, you have to correspond to the actual correct transistor the one transistor out of a million you have to correspond to the actual transistor and instruct the real transistor so that uh, the right transistor will be able to instruct the your, your gpu the graphics processing unit and draw the actual circle uh yeah i don't really understand uh compiler and um i think i think uh uh 